bone side down first, of course, and and I like to sauce it, mop it before I flip it over, and then sauce it again while it's cooking on the other side, on the skin side, and mop it again before you take it off. The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by Michter's and 291 Colorado Whiskey. All right, everybody, joining the Fred Minnick Show is, uh, I got to tell you, I am a big barbecue fan. I'm actually a certified Kansas City barbecue judge, and I'm joined by Rodney Scott, the legendary, iconic uh, pit master and author of uh, Rodney Scott's uh, World of Barbecue. How are you doing? Or excuse me, world of BBQ. What you, so when you do a BBQ, do you still call it barbecue or do you say BBQ? How well, do you roll? I've always, I've always called it barbecue still. BBQ. Because in like, you know, in like, you know, like Dairy Queen, they'll say BBQ. You know, you'll hear some restaurants say barbecue. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a marketing thing for, uh, I, I think for your purposes, of this book, it was probably because barbecue wouldn't fit with that awesome, glorious photo. <laughs> I mean, <Thank> you. <laughs> look at that photo, everybody. I mean, he's 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 hanging on to some. Uh, he's got a plate of uh, ribs there that, I mean, you just want to lick the you want to lick the photo. It looks so good. But uh, it, Rodney, it's great to have you on the show. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. It's great to be here. You know, there is to me there are few things that are a better match than uh, barbecue and bourbon. Mm. Man, uh, it's a nice combination right there. You it, know that it really is. Do you do you drink bourbon while you're while you're in the pit? I do drink bourbon sometimes when I'm in the pit. You know, um, uh, well, I'm gonna say a lot of times when I'm when I'm not, when I'm hanging around, I do drink bourbon. So is that is it like a uh, does when you when you're sipping on a little bourbon do you find yourself being a little bit more creative or you know, like maybe like you know what I'm just gonna pour a little bit here on that one right there. <laughs> no, nah, we we tend to tell more stories when we're sipping on that bourbon. <laughs> right on. Well, we've got some good stuff to sip on today for some stories to come, and I can't wait. Um, one of them we have is a is a Colorado. Uh, bourbon called 291 you know yeah. you you being a um uh you know a man of the pit you'll love that this is finished with aspen wood so i don't i don't know it's, if you've have you ever cooked with aspen wood i don't remember cooking at all with aspen wood so it yeah. it, it really presents a very unique flavor uh, a, a particular type of smoke you just don't get and then i sent you uh, a blood oath now this is not actually this is actually actually not does not have blood in it. That's uh, just what they call it. It's from a brand called uh, Luxco, and it's finished right. in, in with cognac casks. And so I wanted one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to send you a bunch of a uh, bunch of whiskeys with different types of wood. And so that one's finished in a cognac cask. The two ninety one is finished with uh, uh, aspen staves, and the Woodenville is finished with um, uh, with port. So port cast. So we have three different types of American whiskeys that are finished in different types of uh, casks or staves. And then we have the good old traditional Michter's, a 10-year-old bourbon. Now, this is a Kentucky straight bourbon. It's not finished uh -huh. in anything. So it is uh, it is just a, uh, a typical bourbon. Now, all of these are made from different, you know, sources. It's made their, you know, they're all going to be very different from their base, but I would like I would like to start with the Michters, the okay. ten year old, just so you can see what like uh, a non finished bourbon you know would would taste like, and it'll, and to be fair too, the the term finished bourbon is a little bit controversial. It would be <laughs> yeah. it would it would be like um, I guess uh, uh, like additional smoke added to something in your world. But uh, bourbon is not supposed to have anything added to it. And so when this the finishing term started coming out, you know, people like me were like, don't be calling it finished bourbon. Yeah. But it's still good, you know, but um, I wanted to, 
wanted to like start with the Michters just because it's a really Gosh. it's a really great one, you know, to begin with. When you can see you are you already got it down. You already know how to do this. You're just smelling it going back and forth. Mm. It does smell good. Smooth. Mm. What do you taste in this? Not a strong oaky flavor. Just a, a mild, smooth bourbon. Um, so this one has a lot of brown sugar and bananas in it. For me, I don't. I don't get the bananas. A little sweetness, not too strong. By the way, Rodney, this is my first bourbon in like four days. Ooh. Yeah. You know, when you Congratulations. When you when you drink for a living, you know, sometimes you have to schedule off time, you know? So <laughs> so like that that first bourbon that you're back on, you taste it for the first time and it's like, Well, this has got that. It's like, you know, your palate can be a little bit off, but it it's sure tastes nice to me. pretty smooth so all right so you are you're making um what are you what does this one inspire you to make or to pair with wow this one smooth not a lot of sweetness um but a little sweet i would probably put this with Hmm. As far as the food that I cook, or any oh, food. absolutely. But if you want to go outside of your realm, ooh, that would be fun. Oh man, with my food, I, I would probably have. Uh, this can either be pulled pork, or maybe the dark part of the chicken. Oh, like a chicken thigh. Yeah, a nice crispy chicken thigh. Yes. Hmm. You know, I, I'll say that's my favorite thing to judge in those Kansas City barbecue contests. That's what that flavor is, man, right there by the bone. Yeah. Well, you know, I would never have thought about a chicken thigh with this. That that yeah. sounds that sounds amazing. What is the that's, what is what is the best way to cook a chicken thigh? What is your what is your uh what is your tips for a chicken thigh? I like to I like to stay between the the same two twenty five to two fifty, mm -hmm. you know, um, bone side down first of course, and and I like to sauce it, be, mop it before I flip it over, and then sauce it again while it's cooking on the other side on the skin side, and mop it again before you take it off. Now, do you do you trim the skin or do you leave the skin intact entirely? Leave everything on there. Okay. I feel like nature's done its thing. The chicken's done its thing. Just leave it right there and add I, to it. I love it. And how long? How long would you cook um, a chicken thigh in that in that temperature? I would do probably do about three hours total. Um, about an hour and a half on each side at the most. I'm getting I'm getting hungry just hearing you talk about <laughs> about this. I mean, it's the under it's the it's the most underrated uh, you know cut of meat in the in the game, if yes. you ask me. I mean, everybody brags about chicken wings because those have a really nice place in our society at you know at sports bars and everything. But boy, yeah. a, a good chicken thigh, you do it right. It's, it's juicy, it's flavorful, it's 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 a good bite. All right, so that's uh that's a beautiful pairing suggestion, right there, um, and I definitely. I'm with you a thousand percent and I'm going to actually, I would rather, I would rather find a great barbecue pit master who could do some chicken thighs versus me, like, you know, trying to do them and pairing it. I, I want like, I, I want like, cause I've had my chicken thighs. I know they're very good, but I've yeah. had pit, I've had, you know, master pit masters, chicken thighs. And I'm like, it's like another league. It's like whatever yeah. you all do, like and you know this this great book is going to help people to get there. But there's like a it's special there. there's like a special secret thing that you all do that you're not telling people or something. I don't know how you all make the food so amazing, but 
<laughs> what what is what is the secret sauce in in getting to your level of you know of making great barbecue because we all try to do it at home we all buy the the various things whether it's the green egg or it's a great weber grill uh we get the wood you know or we get whatever but can never get it as good as you what is the secret sauce? What is the secret sauce? Uh, may, maybe right I need to get more. <laughs> it's right there. Boom! All right. Uh, so that so folks, basically that means I just need to get more bourbon into Rodney. So uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's go ahead and go to to Woodenville, the uh, the port finish one. Now Woodenville's made in uh, Washington, the state of Washington. Ah. And is a very, very different style. It's finished in port. So port barrels, you know, these things are, you know, tend to be really sweet, tend to be very nutty. Um, but, you know, we, we're coming from a, a, a pretty practical, you know, balanced Kentucky bourbon and going into something that's going to be younger and finished with a different cast. Okay. I don't know about you, but I can definitely smell that wood. You can smell the wood difference, big time. I can definitely get a difference um, in in the aromas between the two so far. This one seems to be a little darker. Wow! You can almost taste the barrel. Period. I know. Mm. Wow. Totally different taste. You know, um, the beautiful thing of something like this and talking to you is that the whiskey is going in and out of that barrel um, every day it's in there and that wood will absorb so much of the whiskey that, you know, sometimes we get like, we get like barrel stays. We get the leftover of the barrel and we'll cut yeah. it up and we'll put it on our grills. And, you know, for the most part, it's usually white oak. And it's really, really good. And it does uh, it does impart a very different flavor. Do you, do you ever cook with uh, used bourbon barrels or used wine barrels or anything like that? I have cooked with uh, used bourbon barrels before. And you, you get this flame, almost a propane-looking flame off of those barrels. Oh, wow. You know, you, you, you think it's something else. It's a different kind of uh, uh, colored flame that's burning, but it's not it, it, it's not nasty at all. I mean, mm -hmm. when it burns down, you, you still get a flavor from the barrel, but it's not so strong that you say, I get more whiskey than I do uh, food. Mm -hmm. So I have done it, yes. And I have found that that's probably the best place for bourbon in in barbecuing. That or maybe a sauce. Um, mar marinating with bourbon is kind of hit and miss. Do you do you have you found any like you know really good marinade recipes? You know to work with bourbon or you know I what I have used. You know it can the marinade can only be there for so long. The bourbon can get too deep into the flesh sometimes and it'll taste like alcohol but wh what are where where do you see like the best places for 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 bourbon in in grilling in uh in grilling i've seen the best places for bourbon has been pretty much in the sauce itself um it would be a, a cap full or two in the sauce mm -hmm. i have yet to marinate anything in bourbon but i have been at parties where the, the guy that wanted to be in charge, it wasn't me, who <laughs> poured, poured a little bit of bourbon in the sauce. And, and you know, it, it gives it a little flavor and, and it gives it a little unique taste. But I personally have yet to do it. Um, okay. I've, I've, I've always kept saying that uh, I would try it, but then I get to that point in the day and say, I don't want to experiment today because I'm ready to eat. <laughs> and I end up <laughs> just sipping the bourbon or skipping it, you know? <laughs> I hear you there. You know, baked beans, like some of the side items. Yeah. Bourbon's really great with with baked beans. I love them with baked beans. 
wow, I could see that. The brown sugar and the beans. Yeah. The, uh, the, 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 yeah. A little bit of mustard in there. Yeah. Now, speaking of like, uh, like side items, I, I, I have found in the barbecue world, there, there's a, there's a division with like, you know, obviously how like the ribs are made and, and, and the rubs and, and, uh, and the sauces, but there's also a division on where you stand on this very important question in life, mustard slaw or mayonnaise slaw. Where do you mayonnaise stand, slaw. Rodney? You're a mayonnaise, mayonnaise slaw. <laughs> mayonnaise slaw. Um, Why mayonnaise slaw over mustard slaw? Well, first of all, I've been raised on mayonnaise slaw. I am an adult to this day because of mayonnaise slaw. Um, <laughs> my, you know, my area never did a lot of mustard slaw, any mustard slaw, really. And uh, I'm, I'm, I've never done it. Just never done it. Never really fell in love with heavy uh mustard sauces um i have tasted some but when it comes to slaw i prefer the mayo all right <laughs> so i i lean on the mustard Definitely side the I, I lean on the mustard side but the the reason being happens to be um i i just kind of fell in love with uh of all the places in the world where i kind of fell in love with their slaw uh, rendezvous in Memphis. I I like fell in love with really? it. I I fell in love with it, and and I've and every every slaw since then has been like um, held up to that kind of standard for me on my palate. That's, and wow. I don't know don't know what it don't know what it was about it, but it kind of converted me from a mayonnaise guy to to mustard. We'll, so. we'll try to bring you back. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, uh, hopefully that doesn't mean. You know, like it doesn't mean like you and I still can't be friends, but oh, we're good. But that that's you know in the barbecue world, in the pit masters, that's like one of those dividing lines. Are you a mustard or mayonnaise yeah, guy? Yeah, you know, bar- some barbecue guys can be very sensitive. You know, some people who are in the barbecue world can be very sensitive. That is true. Actually, we each we, his we, own. We, yeah, <laughs> they can't be sensitive. <laughs> so I want to tell you a funny story. I was a judge at uh, the Jack Daniels uh, barbecue contest. And we would, uh, people would bring us their ribs or thighs and all that. And we had spectators watching us eat and they were sitting in like actual like bleachers and everything. And they were just watching us eat. And, and, uh, I was like, uh, this is really, really weird when the, when they first started bringing the plates and then they started asking for our leftovers. I was like, you want to eat after me? You like what actually eat? what I just ate. And they're like, yeah, I will eat around it. And I, I found that shocking, but the, the, the whole sport of barbecue, that is real. It's a very, it's a very serious, very real. People want to get in on it. It's, it's fascinating. Barbecue is serious. Very serious. Yeah. How did you get into it? Where, where did it, where did it all start for you? You know, for me, barbecue started as a child. Uh, my family opened a general store back in 1972, and uh, they did whole hog and sold sandwiches on Thursdays. Hmm. And, you know, I grew up in that environment where every Thursday when there was a whole hog being cooked, sandwiches hmm. served around 6 o'clock. And, and that was a tradition for us, you know, week to week. So you grow up as a kid in the, in the rural areas, you had work to do and you helped out or you were at the store sweeping, cleaning, whatever you needed to do. And barbecue was there. And if they sent you outside to go help do work or whatever work you had to do, you were hanging around the pits. And that's I awesome. Kind of kind of got stuck in it, you know, grew up doing it. So, Rodney, I grew up raising pigs. And really? Yeah, I raised uh, I raised uh, Berkshire, uh, Duroc, Chester's, Hampshire's. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had a I had a little farm and everything, and and we would have um, we would have like uh, little fairs where we would where we would butcher and cook and, and smoke the hog and everything. We made our own smoker out of like tin uh, aluminum or tin barrels, not aluminum, but it was like. Uh, it was just a basic drum barrel, yeah. And uh, so we made smokers out of those, and 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 welding class, and and 
we we'd smoke these things and it was the most some of the most wonderful memories of my life was around my friends making barbecue you know back yes. in the day and looking back on it i'm pretty sure my teachers could have gone to jail uh for the how we conducted all that <laughs> You know, because we would we would slaughter our own hog, and I don't think he could do that anymore. But uh, yeah, not it legal. was not yeah not legally. But <laughs> it, but I mean, what what is it about what what is it about barbecue that you think kind of like in a lot of ways it's a it's a lot like bourbon where people come together and enjoy each other's companies, but. Barbecue is different. I feel like there's something special about barbecue. If you're brought up in it, especially, you you kind of come together. But what is it about barbecue that that brings forth this camaraderie that we don't see in a lot of other foods? You know, I think one of the things that brings us that strikes our curiosity to to draw us into barbecue so much is the fact that one, you're cooking with fire. We know that you're cooking with fire. Um, two, we know that you're cooking some type of protein. The last thing that's going to keep you there is how is your protein going to be different from what I had before? Mm -hmm. Is yours spicier? Is yours uh, milder? And, and that curiosity is like a natural thing with so many human beings. When they hear barbecue, they feel like I got to go there. I got to smell it cooking and I got to taste it after it's done. It's almost automatic, you know? Kind of like when you wake up or get out of the car and you stretch, you know, it's it's na it's natural. Barbecue mm -hmm. is one of those things that just bring these people's curiosity in, and and they want to taste and see how it's done and hear the different styles, like you just mentioned, mustard slaw. You know who makes mustard slaw? Oh, he does. I want to taste that now. Let me go check him out. It, it's just one of those things that just strikes everybody's curiosity. It's kind of like a moth to a flame. It, it there's they just gotta come. And you've you've had one of the most beautiful careers of of anybody in barbecue, and you know the 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 way the way the Carolinas are in the in the barbecue world. You kind of like in a little island, and then within the island is is South Carolina, and within the island of South Carolina is is Rodney Scott. You know, so you you've kind of like you've kind of built this beautiful. Um, I want to say I, I really do want to say this, like a, like a companionship, you know, for, for the world, for for barbecue because you know when you won the James Beard, and you know I I feel like that put, that put um, that put barbecue on a different pedestal. Yes. And I really do. I really do because it, it, and I wonder do you, do you feel that at times? Like do you do you realize like how important some of the things that you have done um how much it's meant to barbecue overall? Wow. You know, um sometimes I the thought crosses my mind about the accomplishments um, but again, it's, it's, it's humbling to know that I've been a part of that. Mm. It's humbling to know that I've been a part of getting the, the world's attention a little bit on barbecue, um, to, to tell them, Hey, we guys over here, we're serious about this thing. This is, this is a real thing. This is not a fly by the night weekend type setup that we just do every weekend. You know, this is our lives. This is, this is our careers. Um, it's, I, I do look back on it and a lot of people say, you know, you've, you've opened some doors for us and you, you've got us recognized, but I feel like it's a group effort, not just myself. Um, mm. I, I was just one of the first people they seen when they opened the door to let the barbecue people in. Well, I, I just, I have to say, you know, but before we go to the next one, I, I just want to, I do want to, want to raise a glass to you because you you have meant a lot to to the barbecue world and i i appreciate that from the bottom of my heart because i'm a i'm a fanatic with barbecue i love it you know and it's and it's like we need uh when you when you won 
when you won that James Beard, you know, coming from wine and coming from all these other things and going around the world where, you know, barbecue was as much as fine dining and seeing like how like fine dining had kind of in this country had really kind of snubbed uh, barbecue in a lot of ways. Uh, when you won that, it was like it was like validation for all of us who had yeah. been pigging out on a, on a whole hog or or a rib or whatever in in our respective place in the food industry. So, cheers to you, my friend. Man. Cheers to you, I'm, man. I'm, I'm I'm slow here. I didn't tell. So the, I'm uh, I'm sipping on uh, the the Woodenville one more time. The Woodenville. Okay, back to the Woodenville. Yes. Cheers. Well, I already there we go. Cheers one more time. <laughs> so now I want to go to the we go from the the port cask finish, which port cask come from Portugal. Great food in Portugal, by the way. Uh, right. They have a very different style of cooking there. A lot of seafood in their dishes, and. Um, now we go to France where they're finishing cognac barrels, but also a bourbon. So everything we're tasting here is a bourbon. They're just finished in different staves or barrels. It starts as a bourbon and then goes into another cask. And then, uh, so now we're going to a, a bourbon that is finished into a cognac barrel. So it will be the, the blood oath. And cognac is a it's it's a it comes from a French oak, which has uh, more tannic acid than than American oak. Have you ever cooked with French oak? Never cooked with French oak. It's got a it's got a very kind of perfumey smell to it when it's uh, when it's on a fire. Ooh. Wow. That's quite tasty. That is tasty, light. Um You can you can drink that neat all day long. Mm-hmm. That might be that might be dangerous by a barbecue pit. Yeah, that that is when you're not in charge. <laughs> um you you you're the guy that's hanging out watching somebody else do the cooking and when you're drinking that that is yeah yeah it, when, when you're in charge you got to keep it together right you can't yeah. you can't just like go to the next <laughs> yeah. this, this, drinking this this pig won't be done in time if if, if you're cooking it it's gonna be a little bit late because between that flavor and and it kind of it kind of invites you back in, mm. you know. As soon as you finish and, and it leaves your palate, it, it kind of brings you back. You, you remember how you tasted sugar with your finger as a kid? You kind of stole sugar. Oh, all the time, yeah. And 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 that first, it was like, ooh, this is so good. But you leave the table because you don't want to get caught. But later on, you <laughs> want to go back. That's that's kind of what I'm getting at. So one of the things I love about your book is that this is for like a uh, this is very much for a serious barbecue person, but I also think that like a a beginner can jump in here and really apply themselves. Uh, they may have to get a few cedar blocks along the way, but they can really apply themselves to uh, you know really to create a pit or you know start small. You know, was that kind of your intention with the book was to be you know, for everybody? My intention with the book was to be for everybody. Um, my intention was to have that backyard uh, pit master or pit person ready every weekend with an idea. Yeah. You know, you got people out there that loves to cook on weekends and then all of a sudden a few friends or neighbors come by and, and you want to present them with your best dish. So my idea was to have a kind of guide that was simple to make that person who's hosting this barbecue successful. Everything from the whole hog all the way to, you know, your coleslaw. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that was, that was the idea for this book. And which was one of the reasons the spine 
had a brighter color because if you're sipping on bourbon and you go to look for that recipe, you can't find it in your stack of books. You just look for the bright blue and uh, there it is. is. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you've been sipping on this blood oak and, uh, can't find the right book. You just look for the bright color. It's a little blurry. Looking yeah, for the Rodney bit. Scott book. <laughs> <laughs> You know that's a that's a little detail that I didn't even think about, but you're absolutely right. And I've done seven books, and I have to tell you that the you know the layout, um, the photography, um, but more importantly, the realness of it. Like I, I yeah. just want to show folks, like everybody can do that right at at home, and yes. and this is like you know that's real. That's not we're not. He's not talking about going to uh, Lowe's and dropping you know, $2,000 on a smoker. He's yeah. showing you how to do it yourself. And the sweet part about that is you can take it apart and move it. Absolutely. It, you know, I, I, I do, again, going back to those super secrets, like I do question, like everybody follows you step by step here. You know, you still got a little something else you're holding out on us. I know it. <laughs> I know it. What 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 is that? What is a little secret? You know that maybe not might may not be in the book, but you can maybe give folks here. You know, is it a rub on the on the meat? Is it just is it a little prayer you do over the meat? What, what I'm dying to know. I mean, well, not not for the viewers, but mostly for me. <laughs> well, the, the, the rub is in there. The rub recipe is in the book too, as well. Um, you, I guess you got to put on the right tunes when you when you're doing things. You know, you got to be in that good mood. Uh, if not, you can screw things up. That's that's my secret. You know, almost ninety percent of the time that I'm cooking, if I'm allowed to or able to, I'm playing music, and oh. I think that's the key part. You know, who are you it's, listening to? Oh man, I'm listening to everything. I'm listening to some Maze featuring Frankie Beverly. I'm listening to Anthony Hamilton, some Kim. Uh, man, uh, I'll play the OJ's, um, some wow. Drake, Usher. I'm. If it's upbeat and fun, I'm there. And if it's early in the morning and I'm starting off a little smooth, you might hear some Darius Rucker, some Luther Vandros, um, uh, man, who else? Some Al Green. Nice. Uh, you know, start off smooth and pick it up throughout the day. You know, I like I like that music selection, and you know, one of them has a whiskey. Uh, Drake actually has a whiskey called. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's Virginia something, and wow. and Rodney, it's awful. It's 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 what? like it's one he he it's one of the worst whiskeys on the market when he put it out, and uh, I was I was very sad. <laughs> I was very sad because I'm a Drake fan. He's great, yes. but his whiskey, yeah, not good. But maybe maybe it'll get better. Who knows? Who knows? So. What did you think overall here? So now that we're going into the last one, um, I didn't ask you this on the Woodenville, but what are you pairing the uh, what are you pairing the last one we just had with uh, that we can both agree that you fell in love with the Blood Oath? What are you pairing with that one? The with the with the Blood Oath, I would have to say, hmm. smooth. Uh, you can do you can do the beans like you said earlier. Mm. The beans would go great with that because this one is not as sweet, and the brown sugar and the beans would kind of complement that. Um, you also can go. Wow, you can go turkey with this. The smoked turkey. I'm thinking a smoked turkey. Yeah, smoked turkey breast, smoked okay. turkey. Um, man, uh, or you can just do it solo because I, I like I like the way it drinks. So okay, <laughs> I, I could probably do that with a turkey sandwich or a. Uh, or it by itself. Now I want to know what you're putting on a turkey sandwich because I think most people are not envisioning the same type of turkey sandwich that you are. Like I'm uh, thinking I'm just, of just like um, 
a, a basic cold cuts from uh and maybe it's got no. smoke too, maybe it doesn't. Look, tell tell us about your turkey sandwich here, because Okay, it, I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta be clear on that. <laughs> I was kind of relating this one to Rodney's turkey sandwich. The uh the smoked turkey with the rib rub on it and the and and the, the sauce and it's wrapped and, and smoked and held in the in the in the C wrap for a minute just to get the flavors married in. Um mm. Not a cold cut turkey that you would get at the local grocery store. It's this a different turkey. This so, is like a little, uh, little bit of heaven here. Yeah, like a, a smoked turkey, like we do at our restaurant. Not the the stuff you find in the grocery store. All right, so uh, I got to do that now. And look, I'm in I'm in South Carolina enough that uh, I know I need to 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 come by. What what is the uh, and it's been a while since I've, but it's been a while since I've been through uh, South Carolina, probably two, three years. But how, what's the situation there with COVID? How have they been with uh, restaurants there in South Carolina? Rest, restaurants were at fifty percent up until lately, and now they're pretty much back open. Um, everybody's still being cautious. Everybody's still being mm-hmm. safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of outdoor dining and still a lot of to-go orders. At our restaurant, we have a drive-thru, so we get quite a few people that pick up food from the window and keep going. Mm-hmm. But most of our guests sit outside. Well, that's uh, that's good. So I'm glad that you know COVID didn't, you know, take you out of the game. We lost uh, we lost a lot of good restaurants here in Kentucky mm-hmm. uh, because of uh, because of COVID, and I think also a lot of them were probably close to to retirement or selling anyway. So, yeah. I mean, I think it was just kind of like something that people are like, eh, I'm out. You know, I'm, I'm not going to yeah. fight through this. So I feel, like, I feel like they'll be back. Yeah. Uh, you know, restaurants can never go away in our culture. You know, they're just too important. Got to have them. Got to have them. So I didn't get your pairing on the Woodenville. So if I may, one more time, ask you to go back to the Woodenville and, and do a pairing to that. Mm. Woodenville. Woodenville. Uh, wow. In my world, um, no, nah, that won't work. Um, something. Hmm. I could I could probably do that with some wings and with our wings. Mm. How long do you cook your wings? We cook our wings for about um, forty five minutes. Okay. And then we uh, we rub them, cook them for about forty five, cool them down, and flash fry them. So you cool them down and then flash fry them, and then you rub them, or you rub them before the flash fry. We rub them. We rub them before the the smoking of them on the pit, mm-hmm. and we cool them down, flash fry them, serve them. Oh, so there's nothing after the flash fry. Maybe a little bit more rub, not much, okay. not enough to be overwhelmed. Okay, it's, it's it's a it's they're pretty flavorful, and and I think I can see this with those wings. What is it about the, the Woodenville that brings it to that wing? Cause that's a very, I mean, a wing is a very, you know, one, it's a small meat, but that seasoning when it's, when you have those small meats, that smeezi- seasoning is so much more pronounced. And, um, and I've had your rubs before. So, you know, I'm curious, what is it about the Woodenville to, in your eyes that kind of, you know, stands up to those rubs? I think it's a little, a little bit of the, uh, the sweetness that you're getting there. That oaky, that smoky flavor. I don't know. It may be a little strong. Wow. So the smoke from the Woodenville brings it in line. 
it might be a little too strong for the wings the way that we do okay this may this may be a little strong um all of our meats are prepared pretty much the same mm -hmm. pit with the same rub so this woodville probably would have to be something not as seasoned maybe the steak sandwich would be a little bit better pull on 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 mm. this I can I can go with steak. I can yeah. see that with steak. I can. Yeah. Now that I taste it again, I think it'll be too much with the with with the wings. As we go yeah. to the 291. 291. Ooh. Now again, this is uh, finished in uh, aspen staves. Wow, I can taste the wood in this one a lot more than the rest of them. Um. Wow. Mm. All right, what's your breakdown here? You know, when you first taste it, it hits and you think it's going to be kind of hard, but it, it levels right out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it leaves a nice little linger behind it. That's it, it, it kind of smooths out nice and easy. This, this is definitely a sipper. Um, <clears throat> this would probably be the one you hide from your guests and you, you keep for yourself. Wow. Yes, all my friends, I do hide some whiskey from some of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and what is, uh, what, it, um, what would you pair with this? Oh. Man, this, this takes me back to that steak. It, it takes me back to to a grilled steak. Mm. Um, not even the sandwich, but uh, I love a bone-in ribeye. When I'm oh, home. yeah. And um, I could see myself, you know, having a bone-in with this. Uh, definitely. I, 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 if it's the right, if it's the right, uh, if it's the right grade, I think the, like, like a Kobe... Like not saying that I would have Kobe on a normal basis, but <laughs> but but like I I can see that being like too fleshy for this, but uh, but like a nice like upper choice or prime, yeah, you know, just kind of a or that real juicy. I think that would be a really nice compliment to it. Yes. What do you uh when you're when you are going to get meat? What are you? And here we go. I'm I'm still searching for those secrets. I'm still searching for them. Maybe this is it. What are you looking for when you are buying uh, some meat? When I'm buying meat, I'm looking for marbling. Um, mm -hmm. If it's a, a a a cut, I want bone. Um, if it's, for example, a hot dog, a weenie, I want it all beef. Uh, I look at the casing on it to make sure that it's all beef. Um, Chicken would probably be that fresh yellowish look that, you know, mm -hmm. when you know that bird was just as fresh as it could be. Um, uh, wow. Yeah. Do any of the, do any of the things like, uh, how it was fed or how it was raised? Does that, does, does that matter to you or, or is, is the marbling king? Well, you, you know, sometimes how it was fed matters. 
Um, all depends on where I am because sometimes you can't find great cuts in all different places. Good point. Um, you know, uh, if I'm in the butcher shop, I, I I know the guys in the butcher shop here. I immediately trusted trust their cuts and their proteins. So I would just pick things out. But if I'm in a grocery store, I would probably read a little bit more into it to see if it was grass fed and or if it was certified Angus. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I would get a certified Angus if I can't get anything else, because we know what they deliver, how they deliver it. Um, my ground beef, if it's certified Angus, mm -hmm. I, I probably would look for the chuck to have just a little a little fat mixed in there. So the burger doesn't be too dried out. Um, yeah, I look for for fat to meat ratio, not too much fat, but a little bit to add some flavor and some juiciness to it. Um, because you, we all know if you got all lean meat, it's going to be either tough or a little drier. So I, I do tend to read into the labels every now and again if I'm in the grocery stores, but if I'm in the butcher shop, it's almost automatic to say that looks great. I know that's good. I want this and this because of the way that they take pride in, in the cuts that they purchase. Yeah. Well, I, I got to tell you, man, I, I feel I, I'm like so proud because we shop a lot alike. You know, yeah. I mean, I like yeah. I'm like I shop like Rodney Scott. So that's <laughs> that's obviously not the secret uh, that makes that <laughs> those good wings and and ribs and everything. But uh, <laughs> yeah. and jumbo, jumbo wings, not the little ones. Get the jumbo wings. Get the jumbo. Uh, and again, everybody make sure you, you are buying this book right here. This book will solve all your problems when you're trying to like. Uh, you know, change the atmosphere in your neighborhood. And that's uh, Rodney Scott's World of Barbecue or BBQ. And, um, you know, like I've been looking forward to this conversation for a long time, Rodney. And I remember reaching out to you on Instagram and, you know, we, we got the ball rolling to get this going. And I, I've been so excited for this. And, you. and you. Um, you know, I'm just, you're just such a champion for, for a spot in the world that I love and barbecue, I feel like is so underrated for where it should be. And you, and you kind of got a little bit of a, you know, some, you know, if, if I were talking about Superman, you'd have a S under your, under your shirt. <laughs> you, you, you got a, you got a B, you know, you're like, yeah. <laughs> you're like the Superman of barbecue. So, um, what a, what a wonderful time we've had here. And I, I do have to ask you one last hard question. Okay. What is the favorite bourbon that you have had that I sent you? Out of these bourbons, mm -hmm. um, I would grab the Mickers first. Right? Is that your choice? Is that your number one? Mickers? That would be that That's would be awesome. the first one. That would be the first one I would grab. Okay. Right? All right. If I'm just hanging around and my good friend comes by, I will get the blood oak. Okay. Okay. Now, if I don't want to be bothered and I just had a great day, I would grab the 291 from the cabinet where nobody else can see it and kind of keep that on reserve for myself. I love it. And, that's a that's a great way yeah. to, you know, you know, to caveat yeah. those. Yeah, I'm going to be selfish with the 291 and in the Woodville, I would I would still sip on the Woodville as well, maybe share a little bit of that with the friends. But I would go to the, the makers first. All right. Well, it's it's been a pleasure to have you on. Uh, is there anything that you want to tell folks, um, you know, that we missed out on the opportunity to promote here or talk about um, uh, before we cut out? Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to my uh, co-author, Lois Eli. Um, uh, my business partner, Nick Bahakis, uh our head chef, Paul Yak, Nicholas Pahakis, all of these people are my team. They they help to keep me in line <laughs> to to make sure that we don't stray away from the real barbecue that we do. Um and uh at that if you just just kind of a hidden secret, a hidden message I like to put in this book. If you move it around, you'll see that every day is a good day. Oh my gosh, I just saw that when you did that. So, oh wow. Yeah. What? The, you know, stay positive. <laughs> Every day is a good day. 
You said stay positive, and that was one of the things that the the owner of Michter's told me many moons ago when I when I asked him a question about the criticism of his brand. He says we only focus on the positive, so we stay positive. So yes. uh, that is uh, coincidental that you chose Michter's as your favorite today. And um, what what a wonderful time! I look forward to coming to your place of business and and uh, shaking your hand in person. And, uh, and, and honestly, I normally say to people that I, I can't wait to have a dram with you. I can't wait to tear into a rib with you, Rodney. I cannot can wait. I can't <laughs> wait. I know a guy. We can make that happen. Ah, I'll bring the bourbon. Yes. <laughs> Cheers, my friend. Thank you so Cheers. much for coming on. Thank you. Cheers.